um, no man's land. That's Lagos. Uh, first lab, your friend came and he says a Kony budget, you know, and people are now refraining O budget and all that. Uh, third world came and Lagos was jumping. I mean, that is a song, you know, everywhere in the world. Now, Lagos is your city. So, what do we say? Is uh, Lagos the city of or for uh, Chimamanda? What, 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 how, do we, how do we caption it? <laughs> I don't know. I think Lagos is, I like Lagos. Um, I, uh, and Lagos is a home of sorts to me. I mean, I, I think of Nigeria as a place where I have two homes. So, one home is my ancestral hometown in Anambra State. And the other home is Lagos. Come back to Nsuka. I love Nsuka. Nsuka, I grew up there, and and no, let's finish with Lagos, then we'll go back to Nsuka. Lagos. <laughs> yes, I suppose we could call it my home of sorts. I feel, I feel, I feel an emotional attachment to Lagos. I like the city. I like the, I like the. I just think Lagos is such, and, and there's nowhere else like Lagos in the world. Nowhere else. And I often say to people, if you want to know what an African city is like, the real thing, you have to come to Lagos. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the telephone lines will be soon up, will be open soon, and uh, we hope that uh, our viewers will be able to engage uh, Chima Amanda in some conversation as we float together here this 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 morning. Okay, we'll go for a short break now, just a short break. Then we'll be back, and then after that, we'll take on your questions, your comments, or queries that you like to to throw at her. So stay with us. You're still on to close flow NT2 Lagos Network Center, and we have Chima Amanda here with us. First, and we thank you for staying with us, and. Um, Enjoying this conversation with Chimamanda Adi, Adi, Adichie. Adichie, before I go and say Adizi. Now, um, we are coming from Lagos. I'd like us to go to Nsuka. And the specter on the street is Boko Haram insurgency. Is it a fiction or a fact or, or, or just stupid imagination? Can it happen? Wait, I don't, know. I don't understand the question. Boko Haram in Nsuka. Ah, I'm, just, I'm just situating it. Why aren't you situating it in Maiduguri? No, I'm saying that it's already in Maiduguri, so it's mm. not situating it anymore. But not for us to live it, to right. see it, to experience oh, it on the street of Lagos, in beautiful Nsuka town where the university environment has cultural demands of people. How would they react to such? You know, I was one of the Nigerians who said maybe a year ago, oh, it will never happen. But now I don't know. I think what I find most worrying is that the government seems completely clueless about how to handle, yeah. handle this. And, and I find it very worrying. And I also have to say that I don't understand what amnesty means. Because really, um, but also, I mean, there's something about Nigeria where we can't have honest conversations. There's just so much that's politicized. And so we talk about amnesty for Boko Haram. And I'm just thinking, I don't even understand what that means. I don't think many Nigerians understand what that means. And, and then on the other hand, so that's one thing. On the other extreme is where you have soldiers who are murdering innocent people. And we all sort of sit back and, and in the name of... So I think that those two extremes are just unacceptable, at least to me. You cannot go killing innocent people in the name of fighting Boko Haram. And you cannot say you're giving amnesty when we Nigerians don't even understand what... what you know, as there's something evil people say, what is the quarrel? We don't even know what the quarrel is. Um, I like to think that I cannot imagine Boko Haram on the streets of Lagos and the streets of Osaka. But for me, really, I don't even want to imagine it in Medjugorje. You know, I don't, because there are innocent people dying. Um, and, and of course, not everybody in Medjugorje supports Boko Haram. So the idea that it's even there, I think it's terrible. I, I think it's a shame that we have a government which really should have nipped this thing in the bud a long time ago. Didn't, and it just seems, you know, we're all just sort of just looking as though we're waiting for something to fall from the sky and fix it. And, and okay, we have a call online. We have a call online. Good, good morning and um, happy Labor's Day or happy Workers' Day to you. So your question or your comment quickly, please. Hello? Hello? Oh, we lost him or her. Okay. Now, so let's, let's socialize this. Um, art, development, development and art. Um, so at what point can we begin to help? to stand in the vanguard of change. Because right now, it's like the entire country is in a trap. We, we can't seem to get away from it. We don't have the right leaders in the right places. Probably we don't even have the right places for right leaders to mm -hmm. actually emerge. Because I can't imagine why someone like you cannot become education minister. I mean, mm -hmm. so that now is the question. So at what point can we find art that will help us to remodel the way we are developing? I think it's not just art, though. I think it's also... 
mean, one of the changes I would like to see happen in the education curriculum, for example, is more social studies. We need to teach people how to be citizens. Teach people how to be citizens. We have a caller online. Yes, are you a citizen? Good morning. Hello, hello, hello good sir. morning. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Hello. Good morning, sir. We can hear you. Your question morning, or your sir. comment. Yes, good morning, sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Just go ahead. Don't, don't let the children disturb you. Yeah. I would love to ask um, Chimamanda. Um, uh, Chimamanda. Yeah. Uh, question. Go ahead, please. Just go ahead. Don't stop first. Just go ahead. Okay. The question is um, how can somebody who is not schooled in reading novels and books whatsoever be learn doing so early? Say in his 40s. Is it possible? Sir, you, you know, we did not hear that question clearly. You may want to repeat it, please. Hello? Just repeat the question. We can hear you, but okay. not the question clearly. The question I ask is, like, for somebody who doesn't you know, know how to win, like she said, people who read the page, and they said it's too long, how can one, you know, learn it? <laughs> Probably when you are in your 40s, is it still possible? <laughs> You didn't tell us her name, sir, but thank you very much for the question. She's going to take on take you on that. Okay, go ahead. So, it, his his question was, um, if if you didn't learn how to read, read, and now two pages too long because the man is in his forties, so <laughs> how is he going to learn to read at forty? I think you can. I don't think it's ever too late. I don't think it's ever too late. I I think really what it, it's easier when you learn as a child. It's much easier, but as an adult, you can learn. It takes practice. It takes dedication. It takes, you know, I say to people, they say, oh, Lagos is hard. There's no time to read. And I say, mm. when you're going to bed, so take out 30 minutes. Go, go to your room 30 minutes earlier than you would have and read for 30 minutes. Just 30 minutes, even 15 minutes. Time it. And I think if you do that, because in some ways it's like, it's like walking, it's like training muscles. You train your mind. So if you do that over and over, you, you, I think absolutely one can. And it's also about reading what you find interesting. So just, you know, you, you try different books, you try different things, and I completely believe that 40 is not too late. 40 is not too late for you to read, so don't give up on your reading habit. Yes? Hello, good, good morning. Good morning, sir. Your question, sir? Good morning. This is Nelson. This? Um, uh, I'd like to uh, thank Chibamanda for uh, what she's doing, particularly with regards to um, uh, the library project I heard she's working on. Okay. I would like to encourage her uh, uh, and uh, see if she could uh, mobilize greater support in reaching to the secondary school students. I believe uh, we are leaving them behind in this uh, drive to motivate um, young ones to reach. Okay. okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, well, she didn't quite uh, get what you said, but let's just see if we can capture, you know, well, I don't know if you want to talk about the pet project that you are involved with. But somebody seems to have gotten some hint somewhere that you're involved in some pet project. He's now saying, please, can you find a way to extend it to secondary school students so that they can also be... Oh. Okay, yes, that's what he's saying. Yes, I'd like to. He's talking about my creative writing workshops, I think. Um, it, I, there's so much I want to do, but there's only so, so much that I alone can do. And it's not just secondary school, it's also primary school. But you know... There's all of that, but there's also what we do at home. I often say to parents, mm, mm, what are you doing? Mm, right? It's not just, you can't just sit back and bemoan schools. You also have to make your own effort. You have to try, you have to, and when I say reading, I don't mean go and read your maths book. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, go and read narrative. Go and read what we, what we in Nigeria like to call story book. That's what I mean. And people sometimes think it's, oh, it's just something you do when you have time or when you, when you don't have anything better to do. But actually, it's a, it's, I think it's at the core of a well-educated mind, the ability to read narrative. Beautiful. I like that. Now, let, let's, let's cast the mind back to what you were like when you were growing up. You, you, didn't, you didn't set out to be a writer, did you? I was always writing. I knew I would write. I, writing was what I loved doing. I, as a child, I was very drawn to books. You know, I was a child who loved to read and write. But I, I didn't think I could earn a living from writing. So my plan was I would study medicine, be a doctor, and then write when I, had, you know, when I, when I wasn't working. So you, you, you hung up the stethoscope? I did. Actually, I didn't get to the point of having a stethoscope. I did medicine for just one year, and I decided that it wasn't for me. You have to sell this to some Nigerian parents, you know, because especially if someone as brilliant as you are, how did you get to convince your parents that you were not going to be a doctor anymore? 
I just told them that it wasn't for me. I mean, I, I, my parents are very understanding, very, um, very unusual. You're right. I mean, many Nigerian parents would be like, eh, <laughs> where are you going? And particularly because, you know, I got into medicine on the, um, on what they, what they call the merit list. Okay. And you, nobody leaves that, you know, people actually are trying to get into medicine. I think my parents, um, you know, I joke about how they already had a daughter who's a doctor. Maybe that's why they left me. But I think my parents in general like to feel that their children, and with me, they, they saw that, I, that I'm a hard worker. I've always been mm, a hard worker. Mm, and mm, they saw that mm. I was committed to, I wanted to write, and I wanted to do something that was not a science. And I felt that was where I should be. And in general, I think parents still are caught up in a way of thinking that's outdated. So we're still telling children, go and study law, go and study medicine. And really, when you think about the, the job market today and the reality of it, it doesn't even make sense to keep doing that because they're thinking about their time when it was the professional, you know, you had to be a lawyer or a doctor. And today, it's just not. I think, I think people should be channeled towards where they, they have talent and where, where they can do well. And it's incredible what, what will happen when you do that. You know, I don't believe at all in, in telling them to go and, go and be a professional lawyer. Okay. Now